Libra, hi, welcome to my channel. So today we have a reading for you, no particular subject. We're going to take an issue, something we know, something we don't know. Recent past advice and potential outcome. At the end, there'll be an opportunity for an extended where we'll dive in deeper. You can watch this for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node, or if any of those planets are currently transiting your seventh house, this could be for you. Once again, thank you for the continued support, whatever... Uh, uh, whichever way it comes, liking, sharing, subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider it. It's the easiest and fastest way to grow the channel. It's very much appreciated. Thank you to Patreon members, all those that purchase private reads, extend it, buy me a coffee's donations. It uh, allows me to continue doing this for you guys. Cross watchers, you're more than welcome. The message may well be for you. All the information's in the description box. Just hit the more button below. Okay, let's do one more. Libra, what is going on? We have the Four of Wands, celebrations. It is the Venus in Aries, the Emperor meets the Empress. Okay. Interesting. Okay, I'm not going to be surprised if the Tower comes out this way. So in between the two magpies here, we, we see like an eye there an eye there and an eye there um and those t those particular eyes i oh, wish i had it with me um my toff deck is way over there so the tower in the toff there, there is an eye at the top it's the uh, represents the eye of horus the eye of shiva very much um that kind of destruction aspect here and i'm a great believer that um and the, the, the particular fact that there's three there I'm a great believer that we get these little nudges before the big tower. I always say the first one's a little little push, the second one's a bit of a shove, the third one's the rug. Uh, and it always takes me back to that um, scene in Indiana Jones, the um, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Um, and he always says like three times it falls when they're going down the river and there's three waterfalls and each one gets bigger and bigger. So this is what I'm kind of seeing here. So it wouldn't shock me if the tower's here. If not, I'm gonna look for the tower anyway. So, four of wands. It doesn't have to be about um, a, a marriage. It could, be, it could be something to do with a family, fourth house, home, um, something within the home. Who knows, let's see. Something we know. Something we don't know. Recent past. Advice, potential outcome, mm. okay, bottom of the deck we have the world, the two of wands, the emperor and the six of cups, okay, the tower's not here but I will be looking for it because there's some energy in the future that is suggesting there's something to prepare for so we've got the four of wands um like i said this could be something related to the home this could be something related to uh, a partnership a marriage um whatever this is what we're aware of is the seven of wands now the seven of wands is a card of um it's a card of winning in an aspect here but I'm more getting the fact that Astro, especially in the recent past, we've got the Strength card. Uh, Astro Matrix on their app have chosen the Seven of Wands as Venus in retrograde for the for the, the Tarot card to represent the transit. And obviously Venus is in Leo. We're in Leo season. It's been a very eventful month. We've got the start of, the, uh, of, of August was the full moon in Aquarius, uh, which was a super moon, very, very powerful. And if you want to relate that to the tarot, is the Seven of Swords, not the best card. Um, so there's something that's kind of come to the surface here. Venus in retrograde always has us reevaluating our um, relationships or maybe connections with money, aesthetics, beauty, uh, ourselves, or everything Venus. What we're not aware of is the Four of Pentacles. Now the Four of Pentacles 
it's kind of oh well, I've never noticed that before there was a major link here Yeah, there's there's definitely a, there's a preparation for a tower here. I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. So we've got the four of pentacles. It, let's look closely at it. We've got the the uh, fox that's already got these rabbits here. We've got a rabbit here that's um, under the moonlight, so standing out. Your advice is the fool. The rabbit needs to take a leap of faith here to move beyond beyond the dangers that the wolf is appearing with. Your outcome is the nine of wands. Nine of Wands is perseverance and it's also um, a preparation for, you know, something's coming. And look, we've got the exact same position of the fox as it looks in this deck. So something is like ready to happen. Something is ready to perch. And I'm kind of getting the energy here. Because the tower hasn't shown up in the spread, I'm getting an energy, energy here of we can prepare for this. So... To minimise the damage of, of, of a tower is, is making sure you're not in the tower when it collapses. So how do we do that? We need to be willing to see the writing on the wall. We need to be willing to see cracks in the foundation. We need to be willing to acknowledge when something doesn't feel right. You know, always remember your body and your nervous system will never lie to you, ever. Your body is your first defence mechanism. If you energetically feel horrible around a certain person, a certain situation, a certain, it, it could even be a building. If you have, or this, this could be something that doesn't feel quite right in the news, possibly. Your body will tell you first, okay? Um, the, obviously it hurts to see it and acknowledge, but it hurts far more to ignore it. Because when those, when that side kind of like third tower comes sweeping in, is not an easy process. So let's find out where that tower is. What's either side of it? My apologies, I can't flip through these very quickly because it's uh, a bigger deck. And interestingly, with the four of pentacles, is the sun in Capricorn. So it's kind of like the sun highlighting the devil. Um, so there could be something about that. So we'll check out the devil as well while we're here. Okay, the devil is with the death and the ten of cups. So this could be something that's reached a saturation point. In the top deck, the ten of cups it kind of indicates something that's hit its peak. You know, the cup is full, can't pour any more into it. It's it's you've 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 had a five course meal and you're full and you cannot have any more. So something is coming to the surface here, and the devil is if we all right, if we pretend that that's the rabbit, um, something is getting highlighted where that rabbit is now on shore. And I kind of feel like the wolf is ready to a pounce, but if we see from a higher perspective like the owl, we can see it coming. So I don't know what this is. It sounds quite intense, <laughs> but um, let's see. Where's the tower? final card into it nope nearly okay the queen of pent so it's with the tower is with the queen of pentacles the ten of wands and the three of swords this could be several things this could be seeing um the cracks in a situation here in regards to maybe not looking after yourself this could be burnout this could be um, I'm sorry if, if you're in a relationship, especially with the four of wands here, this could be a situation that is involving the third energy. It doesn't have to be another person. It could be just something that drags the energy away too much. Whatever it is, it feels because of the ten of wands is something that's quite necessary. It's like you've reached, we saw that ten of cups, that saturation point, you've reached a certain level of whatever this is. Ten of wands is indicative of a lot of, this you could be possibly an empath or your empathic abilities are massively increasing and when they're massively increasing you need to step up your game in energetic clearing uh, otherwise you're going to be overwhelmed 
so something is needing to come to an end here um it could be something that you're ignoring in terms of where your saturn is because we do have the world at the bottom of the deck and your outcome being the nine of wands um oh, that's the moon sorry oh why did i say that then oh the ten of wands sorry ten of wands that we saw next to the tower uh, is saturn in in sagittarius so there is something here that the universe is trying to warn you about and you're supposed to see the you're supposed to see the the red flags or whatever um the signs before it happens i almost feel like the universe is actually coming in here to give you a, a heads up that something is changing it's something you know because I, I kind of feel like intuitively you know something is changing because the world like i say is with the two of wands and the emperor so the two of wands for me is, is obviously the the lion and the lioness um very much speaks of masculine and feminine and the empress i noticed is with the um high priestess i'm sure i saw Unless I'm going dual alley, which won't surprise me. Yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. So the High Priestess, the Empress, and the King of Pentacles, and the Moon. So there's something very hidden, um, but then we've got that King of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles was next to the Tower. This could be partnerships. This doesn't have to be romantic. This could be business partnerships. You need to really, really pay attention to what your body is telling you here, Libra. Because the universe is warning, it is giving you a heads up that something is about to collapse and you need to recognize um, what it is by listening to your body, essentially. Okay? You can cope with it, whatever it is you can cope with. The Nine of Wands is perseverance, it's strength, it's um, the ability to keep going. So I'm not concerned about you coming out the other side. However, I think you can mitigate the um, seriousness of the energy if you recognize it beforehand. Okay. In your extended, we will look at what, we'll just dive in deeper. We'll just mirror this reading. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna clarify each card. I'll leave these out and we'll, um, we'll dive in. Okay. If you can join me, fantastic. If not, let me know if this resonates. We have Venus in Aries. We have Mars in Leo, Sun in Capricorn, Leo, Gemini, Aquarius, Moon in Sagittarius, Capricorn, Mars in Aries, Aries, Sun in Scorpio, Leo, Jupiter in Pisces, Gemini, Virgo, Sun in Virgo, Venus in Cancer, Saturn in Taurus, Sagittarius, we have wands, we have pentacles, cups. Well, this is, oh, swords eventually, but uh, it took a while to get there. So this is more, this is out of the mind. This isn't the, the, an overthinking aspect of things. This is, this is an energy that's taking place. You might be seeing 744 a lot. I don't know, it's standing out for me, is that? Okay. Take care. See you soon. Bye.